Right, so in today's video, we're going to be making the resin piece and we're going to make this Tree of Life pendant. Let's go. We are back. So I'm going to challenge myself today. Um, I've seen this a lot um, on Amazon, on Facebook, and it's the Tree of Life and it's wrapped around, um, I don't think it's a natural stone, I think it's a lab made crystal. Um, so <laughs> I've only ever done this on a bigger scale on one of my cabs. This was my only ever attempt at a tree on one of my resin pieces. So you could do this with two part, but for the for the video, um, I want to kind of get it all done as quick as I can. I'm going to be using the Let's Resin UV. And these are molds from Let's Resin. I think they're still available, but I have to check. But you could do any kind of donut um you could use any kind of donut mold there's lots of molds available with this ring and the tricky thing for me is going to be here's one i made earlier is getting the design on the back don't worry about the hole hopefully we can cover that or we can use that i haven't decided um you know me i'm going to kind of go with the flow but you can see if it wants to focus it really is a nice effect and for that all i'm using is these Iridescent flakes, I think they are. I've got tons of this stuff. It used to come free in a resin that I used to use back when I began using resin. So enough waffling. It's going to be a challenge. It's going to be quite fiddly. I know a lot of you like that word now. <laughs> so let's get mixing. So I've got my little mixing cup. I'm just going to pour my UV into there. Now some of these flakes flakes <laughs> some of these flakes can be quite chunky quite big and quite hard to get in so it is going to be a case of possibly pulling some chunks out as we go I'm just gonna mix in quite a bit and the good thing with these is the UV light from the lamp will penetrate through and it will cure solid again you could do this with two parts not a problem so we are just going to mix that in slowly it's going to be a lot of bubbles anyway but we can kind of work those out as we go as always massive shout out to my channel members thank you very much and a big shout out as well to steve mcdonald he's just done a video on alcohol inks and it's a great video very informative so go and check that out i was going to mention it in my next petri video but I thought I'd do it now. So I'm just going to put this into my mould. Doesn't matter if it spills over the sides. I can clean that up. Really doesn't matter. But we do want this flat on the back. For the wiring to sit nicely. Again, excuse the mess. So if you've got too much in there, you can just take some out. But whilst there is still quite a bit in there, I'm just going to push down with my tool just to work any bubbles out that may be stuck. Just push them down. So yeah, I'm not a professional when it comes to wire wrapping. I do try. So don't judge me. And a massive shout out to Oxana Crafts. I'll pop her video in, which was the inspiration behind my original Tree of Life piece that I made. I wouldn't have been able to do it without her video. She is an incredible wire artist. I watch quite quite a lot of her content now and picked up so much. And it really is a good art to work alongside with resin, especially if you're making jewellery. Right, I'll take out a little bit more. So I do need that flat back for the for the wire to sit. So again, just double checking. We can take some more time. Just making sure there's no bubbles on the front. Now you could do this with lots of different stuff. You don't have to use the the chunks that I'm using. Could do this with Petri as well. Okay. 
Now for the curing. As always, my handy little lamp is plugged into my power bank. And I'm just going to give that two minutes by holding down the button. And once that is cured on that side, I'm just going to use my other mould, flip that over, and then just give that a, another couple of minutes just on the back, just to make sure it's fully cured. Alrighty then, let's see what we've got. As always, all the links will be in the description box below for everything that I'm using. There you have it. Again, ignore the hole. Not sure what I'm going to do with that yet. Like I said, I am going to be kind of making this up as we go along. <laughs> so, let's get wrapping. Okay, let's talk gauges. Now, most of my wires I got in a multi-pack on Amazon. I'll pop the link in the description, but just double check because I have mixed up some of my wires. So, for the frame and the bale... That is a 23 gauge. For the tree itself and the roots and the branches, that is a 28 gauge. And those are both round. Now for the bale itself, I'm gonna be using a half round, which is 24 gauge, just to wrap around the bale. So when I say half round, it's flat. Try and get, it's really difficult because it is fine, but it's flat on one side and rounded on the top. Okay, so what I've decided to use is my ring sizer to make the framework. Luckily, it's big enough. So, we're going to start by, I've cut a section off. It's probably a little bit too long, but again, I'm not a pro at this, so I might have some waste. So this length will make the frame and most of the bale itself. So we've got around eight inches in length for that frame. What you might also want to do, because resin can be quite sharp, is I just use a cuticle tool before you start and just run that around. Just take off any sharp edges if you need to, because I don't want you cutting yourself if you slip really is simple just to run that cuticle tool around the whole back not the front the back lip where the resin has cured it will it will give you a lip so just carefully I nearly cut myself <laughs> actually it's pretty hard to cut yourself with these tools just take that sharp edge off so the tools that I'm going to be using just quickly really cheap set off Amazon I'm not going to be using them all and these Cutters were a set of five. Again, all links are in the box below. Some people have struggled to find that description box. Just below the video, you'll see a little bit of writing and there'll be more. Click on more and you'll find everything in there. So, we're going to measure our, not ring, but it is a ring. <laughs> and we do want the, the framework to be hidden. So you can kind of line it up from the back and see how big we need to go. So... I'm putting that as between Z3 and Z4. So we're going to find our roughly the centre of our frame. And then we're just going to bend that on that ring. And if it needs to be any bigger, we can make it bigger. And then we just take that off and just measure that up against our frame so we do need to wrap the branches and the roots but I think that is pretty much perfect for where we need to be so once we have that we can use our flat nose pliers and the hole is actually quite handy to have on this because I can use that as a kind of center part we're just going to bend up hold it in place and just bend up the wire to where the bale is going to be made on both sides. Can take that off and just bend that up like so. So that is the beginning of our frame. 
once that's pulled tight with the bow wire that should still be hidden now we just need our half flat wire again I'm probably cutting off too much but I'd rather have too much than not enough and again it's, it's very important that you find the flat part of the wire and to soften the wire as well or to straighten it out you can just use a cloth and just run the cloth over the wire and just make it easier to move around and you can get different softness wire as well so if you struggle with your hands you can go with a dead soft it's a lot easier to, to work with can't pick it up <laughs> so we're going to leave a bit of a tail to work with afterwards we're just going to start this off and just get that those bow wires quite tight and then just keep wrapping I don't want the bail too long but you can see how I've just started that off you can do a couple of wraps and then you can push those down like so for a nice neat beginning so when we could we can now just move that tail part just out of the way just move that down and then we can continue wrapping now you can use your nylon pliers to hold the wires in place you get a tidier flatter finish that's up to you sorry I knocked the camera but you don't want them to twist so just keep going I don't want the bow too large but I'm going to carry on and we'll be back so as you were going just after a couple of wraps around the two wires just use your pliers and just push them down so they sit really snug together like so so now I've got my desired length, I can use my nylon pliers and just push that half round down just to flatten that down and really make it strong. And now I'm just going to slightly pull these two wires apart just to finish this off. I'm going to wrap this wire just around one of the bail wires and just pull that down so it's really tight. if I go round again and you won't see this because it will be hidden and it can twist so just be careful and just untwist it and then just push those wires really tightly down like so and then we can just snip off that excess close to the center like so and just push that down and that will be hidden when we bring the bale down on itself to the frame so all we need to do now is just with this tail that we've got left I, I did think that I'd need to harsen the bale with that but I lost track well I got confused so we're just going to bring that round the back where we cut the top wire off and we're just going to cut that like so and you can then tuck that you may recognize my little resin tool you can then tuck that up inside the wiring if you choose to but it will be hidden when we bring that bale down but you don't want any sharp bits that can catch like so so this is where we're up to you can't really see the wire through the through the ring we've got a nice bale to just bend into place and bring that back down now so you can bend it forward just slightly and then just start manipulating the wire you could use these pliers as well to shape the bale around to get it nice 
and tidy. It's just a case of manipulating that, making it smaller if you need to. Sorry. <laughs> but we do want those that end of the wire to come close with the back of the piece. So when we cut it and bend those, helps if you put it on the right way. <laughs> it's going to be hidden behind that frame. doesn't matter if your wire is starting to bend, we can flatten that out as we go. You can tell I don't do many of these kind of videos because my hands are getting in the way or I'm moving my hands off of camera. So it's just a case of just bending that around. Let's use my flat nose pliers. Just get that in place. What I'm going to do now is just cut this excess off a little bit longer than I, I think I need to. Because what we need to do is just close this bail up. Like so. And again, it's gone out of shape a bit, but we can just carefully bend that as we go like so so you're probably thinking how are uh, how's the bail not going to bend this is going to be the tricky bit that i've not really planned so we need to bring these wires into a a ring which is going to be hidden behind the piece and when it comes to doing the branches we'll harness onto those rings I'm going to start by separating those two wires there. And I am just going with the flow on this. I really am. I'm going to cut them down just a little bit more. So I do need these to be hidden. I think that will do. And now I'm going to use from that tool set these rounded nosed pliers. I'm just going to grip the end and just really tightly bring those inwards into a loop. It's not going to be a perfect loop at the moment because I do need to check it against the, the resin piece. But I just want to close those up as best I can and as tightly as I can sorry my focus <laughs> it's stuck And I can always push those together a bit more. It's a bit wonky. But I'm going to keep playing with it. Until I get it right. And so there we have it. Um, that was a little bit fiddly to get there. But those two loops there. Will be hidden. That is the back. Just hidden by that frame. So now we come on to the next stage. My bail is a bit wonky, we can fix that afterwards. Yeah, so the next stage we need to cut our lengths for the actual tree. So this is our 28 gauge round wire. And again, I'm, I'm cutting off more than what I need. And that is about six inches. So we need a few of these. And what we need to do is just fold them, bend them in half, like so. Now, depending on the thickness of the tree that you want and the branches, you could have more or less. So I'm going to keep cutting. <laughs> and what I do once I've cut one, I just hold the end of one of the pieces, follow it up, bend it, follow it back down again. They don't have to be exactly the same length to the millimetre 
and that just makes it a little bit easier. Right, so I have 10 total wires all bent ready to go. I did the same amount on this one so I kind of want my tree to be just as chunky as that one really. So here we go. So we want to grab each one of these and just pop them over our frame like so and one at a time this can be a little bit tedious. We're just gonna wrap that round our frame a couple of times and then just pull those tight close them together you do want them to be fairly tight and very tidy So that's what you're left with, just a couple of wraps around and you want to do this with all of the wires. So this is what you will be left with. You might be thinking, oh that's too fiddly for me, it's, it's, my hands are too big. But my hands are extremely big by the way, um, they are, and my fingers, you know, they, they are quite chunky. So it. You know it, it can be done it's just perseverance that probably took me about 10 minutes to do all those but it really is worth it in the long run hopefully if we can make this work so that it is all hidden <laughs> so on to the next stage we're going to make our twisty roots so you kind of move these wires to the side and just do one set of wires at a time now I've kind of gone a little bit off track to Oksana's video, but if you check it out, it's pretty much the same. So we're just gonna bend these into like a zigzag formation. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just gonna keep bending those roots like so and you want to do that with every every set of the every set of wire and once i've done five wires on that side what i'm going to do is flip that around and bend the others in the same way but they're going to be facing a different direction just to make it a bit more symmetrical because i'm like that so i don't want all the roots kind of pointing in the same direction on both sides if that makes sense and just grabbing and bending move that up onto the next one grabbing bend move down bend back move bend back so it's just creating that zigzag root effect so there we have them five pieces aside I'm going to try and keep it that way as we move forward but you can see all the roots all twisted and ready to go so with our piece on the front all we need to do now is bring these roots over and begin to make our tree trunk I do set myself some challenges don't I <laughs> So we're going to get our piece on our frame. I'm going to make sure that hole's at the top. The bail I can straighten out afterwards. So we're just going to bring all of our roots around. Just bend them up. The resin piece is going to move around. I think I need to add some more twists into these roots first. Yeah, so I just extended the length of those zigzag roots because when I was bringing it round, they weren't really visible. So we're just gonna bend these roots around the shape of the resin piece. It doesn't matter on their position at the moment because we can slide those across as we go along. But we just want that bend on the wire just to get that shape. And then 
just making sure that that those bezel prongs are hidden as we go we're just going to hold those in place and bunch them together again we can move this around as we go along but you can see what what is happening so I'm going to grab all of these um, roots and twist twist them all together to create our tree trunk and again we can space these out if we need to unwrap some of the twist that's fine we can do that but you can already see the beginning of our tree As always, a big thank you as well to anyone who's bought me a coffee or a super thanks. I will be updating that list soon. I'm just trying to catch up because um, I did have that time off from filming. But yeah, it's massively appreciated. And here we can see the really nice roots. And that frame is hidden really nicely. So what we can do now is start to, it doesn't matter, you know, about the five each side so much. We can, we can, we can bring those around now. So just kind of pull out the wiring. Trees aren't always perfect <laughs> as with anything in nature, especially myself. <laughs> We're just going to spread these around. I want some branches quite low. We could do them in twos or threes. But just see where the wiring is sitting and just bring them around. So we've got some here at the back. We can bring those down. And I'm going to be doing these in groups of what have we got? 10. 10 in total so we're gonna try and do threes and twos so some skinny branches and some quite wider so what I've done is I've grouped the side ones in threes so I've got three sets of three each side and these two here will be the two which twist and come over the top and fasten our bale in place hopefully you can see everything is still quite quite hidden which is really good so what we can do now is just bend those two bale wires out of the way and we can start twisting these branches. You may find a better way of doing this. I mean, Oksana twists things in a different way and kind of continues the, 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 the tree upwards through the piece. But I'm not very good at that. So we're just going to start twisting our branches. And you can separate them slightly if you wanted to. So it looks like a twig is coming off of the branch. Like so. We just want to do that with all of them. Just twist them around. And we're gonna we're gonna bend these anyway once everything is secure. Just to give it a more natural effect. Yeah, it's just a case of twisting everything around if they're not twisting properly you can always grab your pliers a bit of assistance so once you're happy with the branch placement we can start just balancing things out now Xana gives a great tip with this because the ring can move around the place, you want to work on one side and then move to the other. Because if you do all this side, what can happen is the piece can slide to the left, or if you do it that side, slide to the right, and it can keep just moving all over the place. So I'm going to start with these two top left and right branches. And just make sure that's centered again. Come round to the back. Now what we need to do 
is with each branch or each group just bring that through and underneath that frame I'm using my pliers because it is a lot easier to it's like sewing I suppose so just bring that through you want to do this a couple of times on each wire but just keep an eye on the frame because it will move and it will try to go off centre and we're not going to start snipping anything off until we've finalised all of the branches because we might need to pull one side to balance out the other I think this is the most time consuming part so we're just going to keep doing that doesn't matter if things move, the branches move, we can always straighten those out afterwards. But it's just a case of weaving all of these round a couple of times around that back frame. Could do one and then move on to the other. Sorry, it's not my normal kind of filming angle, but you can see what I'm doing. And then as mentioned, some of them on this side I've only done one. I just want to bring this other side through just to make sure that it doesn't go wonky. <laughs> it's so much easier using these pliers. Just helps you get a grip on everything. easier than using my big hands anyway right let's skip this part all right so once we've got all of those wrapped around twice on the back ready to cut down ignore the branches and the tree stump at the moment as so I will sort those out shortly we now need to fasten our two bale wires so I've just twisted the two wires together a bit at the top I'm going to bring those over and then it's a case of doing the same thing but threading them to, through those two tiny holes now if I thread them through the top I'm at risk of them coming through that tiny little gap so what I'm going to do is thread them through the bottom just for that added support and again I'm gonna do that twice just to make sure that it's not going anywhere if it wants to go through without the wire bending <laughs> there we go yes yeah, so we're just gonna feed that through twice on both sides and then we can just snip those two bow wires and then we can just poke those inside the existing holes that we've already gone through twice just so that they don't catch on anything and what you can do is just to secure those even more just a tiny dab of UV resin inside the hole and cure that in place so now with all of our excess wires around the outside again we just want to snip those and then just tuck them under the inside of the ring and again you can also secure those with a tiny dab of UV resin so just make sure you leave yourself enough to bend over that wire and tuck or just seal with the UV like I said you see that is tucked away and hidden 
Now what I should have said before that stage of cutting off the excess, <laughs> do that bit after this bit, um, is we want to just bend our tree because what can happen is that can shorten those wires that we've just cut. Uh, hopefully I won't get much because I, I have got some slack in these branches and the trunk. So we can then just bend things to look a bit more natural. Bend them any way you like. Just to give it that finishing touch. As always, give the video a thumbs up, drop me a comment, really does help with the algorithm. The comments especially, and obviously watching the video the whole way through. I can just bring that, play around with that bale, straighten that out, and just bring it up a little bit just to hide it. And there we go. Again, I'm not a pro, but I'm really, really happy with that. And the thing is with using big cabochons is that you do take the eye away from the cabochon itself and the art behind it. So at least with this, they kind of balance each other out. You can just spread these roots around a little bit more. And I can't find my hole. I thought I left it at the top, but it has moved. And I can't actually see it, which is good. So it must be down here somewhere in the roots, I think. I'm not sure. All right, so yeah, there you go. If you haven't subbed, hit that button for me and I will see you for the next one. Bye for now.